when you get a UX design job offer, or even better, multiple UX offers, you might wonder, hmm, which offer should I take? While you might be struggling in the decision making, this can also be a fun time because in this video, I'm going to show you some examples, walk you through what you might be looking out for in an offer, how to evaluate it from conversation to company value to personal growth, so that you can understand yourself better and as a result, pick the offer that is the best for you. There's a lot to go through today, so let's get started and roll the intro. everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. I have to be honest, when joining a company, there are so many things you have to think about. If you have multiple offers, the good thing is you have multiple offers. The downside is, well, you have multiple offers. You might find yourself get torn between three, four, five offers. They look similar and you don't know how to break the tie. Honestly, I totally feel you because I was there. But there is a way out. So first, let me show you what is involved in the matter of choosing and evaluating offers. I can generally break it down into multiple topics as the following. First being compensation, how much money, how much salary you'll be making. And in the compensation package, you should also include like benefits, 401k, stocks, and things like that. The second part being the company itself. Like you have to evaluate the, the mission of the company, the value, the culture, leadership. And then next will be the design skills that you might be acquiring, that you will learn, and future opportunity regarding your design skills, specifically your expertise. And then the fourth one I would say is the personal growth, your goal, value, your philosophy, maybe even location, future planning, things like that. So four topics, four chapters within each one, I will ask you a lot of questions, give you some research points. Once you have all the answers, you can compare across them, then you should have a more clear direction. I can literally talk about each one for like an hour, but I'm not gonna do that here. To keep this video short and sweet, I'm gonna only cover the first two today, and then the other two next week. Now, without further ado, Let's dive right into it. Chapter one, compensation. I've talked about the basic structure of compensation, the salary, bonuses, and things like that in one of my previous video. I will have a link up here and description down below. In this video in particular, I will go into a longer list of things within the compensation package. So the first one being the compensation, the actual money, the salary you will get, you know, the base, the equity, bonuses, relocation bonus, end of year bonus. Do they have any of those? Sign on bonus. Regarding your equity, how many RSU? How many shares of stocks do you have? What is the vesting cycle? Is it a typical 25, 25, 25% or is it gonna be a gradual amount? And next is the 401k matching. Does this offer, does this company offer 401k matching? If you don't know what it is, it's basically you can contribute money from your salary to this account, this 401k account before taxes. So you can invest it into an index fund, for example, and let it grow over time. And depending on your company, they might match your contribution. So for example, if you contribute $1,000 to your 401k account, your company might put another $1,000 from their pocket to your 401k, which means you just get another free $1,000. So now your 401k account will start to grow and compound 2,000 instead of 1,000. It's an excellent deal. The only catch is this is for retirement, which means you're not supposed to withdraw money from this 401k account until you retire until you are 60 or so. Next, does the company offer HSA, which is another account short for health savings account. Again, you also put pre-tax money in it and invest let it grow. You can use that money to pay for any health related bills. It will be tax free. You can withdraw the money from this account tax free after 65 years old. If you're relatively healthy the whole time, then this is basically another 401k account. What about health benefits? What insurance plan do they have? What is covered? Is that a high deductible plan? What options do you have? Do they have a good healthcare plan that works well with your current health condition? Does your company cover transportation, cash and pass? Does the company offer breakfast, lunch and dinner or do you have to run grocery shopping every week and cook every day? Does your company cover home internet, Wi-Fi? Do they reimburse your cell phone plan? The list can go on and on but this is a really good point to start. You can do some research, find out about the answers and compare across different offers and see what you get from there. My quick note here is that compensation is important, money is important, but money is not everything. So personally, I will not emphasize too much on the money on the compensation side of things, but still I have to make sure you can cover my living expenses, my necessity, the cost of living, pay my rents. So that's the base minimum that I have to cover. But of course, 
the higher the merrier. Which leads to the last question, do all these offers cover your basic needs? They probably do if you are applying for jobs in Silicon Valley. Next chapter two, the company itself. This is actually a really important point. I knew it was important, but I didn't know it was that important until I really do my homework and do my research and really think through what I'm looking for, what I stand for, what my value, what my philosophy is, and compare that against the company, the value and mission and all that. Because think about it, when you take this offer, you're investing in this company that affects your future financially and personally. Remember we just talked about conversations, RSUs, stocks? Say you join this company, you work in this company every day. You have the company hit the milestones, the financials, the metrics. If your company does well and makes money, have profits, your stocks will be worth a lot more in the future. What do you believe in? What do you value? Does the company, does the offer that you get value the same thing? Accomplishing a mission that you root for? All those will and should factor in your decision making process. So now let's take a look at them more granularly one by one. The company mission. What do they do? What is the company trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? And you know Google is trying to organize the world's information and make it accessible to everybody. Next, company value, company culture. You know, Apple, they really have their, their secrecy culture that you only know what you need to know. Everybody operate in a need to know basis. While Google is quite transparent that everybody knows everything, you can use an internal tool to search for other team and talk to other people from other team and get to know what they're doing. So which one do you prefer? Which one do you like better? Which one do you think you will enjoy working in more? And one thing about culture, culture is not really what they say they are, but actually what they do and execute. So when you try to look up company cultures, make sure you look at the thing that they actually do in a company, not the buzzword, not what they put in the headline. Look at maybe the employee feedback from the company and see if they are actually doing what they claim to do. Next is leadership. Who are the founders of the company? What are their backgrounds? What have they done in the past? Do they have a track record of executing and propel the company forward? What do they believe in? What do they think about the future? How are they planning to take the company forward? Are those the leaders, the people that you want to learn from, that you want to be associated with, that you want to work closely with? Which leads to the next point. Who will be working in the company? Like what are the backgrounds that you will be working with? Uh, if you're a designer, probably you'll be in a design team. So who are your designer peers? Where are they from? Where did they go to school? What are their product vision? What are their design? levels what well, how are their skills and then after all the company growth where's the company heading what is their future roadmap looks like what product are they going to push out in the future in the next month six month year what is the long-term north star vision this is something that you can probably ask the hiring manager after you get the offer to get more clarification on that once you find out are those the things that you want to work on because if you join you will work on those things the last one i have here is do you like the office space if you interview in person and of course this is assuming you'll be going into the office you're not doing remote working i personally prefer in person uh, mostly i'm a designer so i'm a people person I like to be around people, I like to talk to people, show them my prototypes and interact, engage and learn from each other in person. And more importantly, I think the environment that I will be in when I'm doing my work will have a huge effect in my performance and my day-to-day -day work. So when I interview, I tend to go on site and really look at the environment, the surrounding, the physical, the interior, to see how is the dynamic. What's the energy level in the building? Do people walk a lot and they bump into each other? How close do people sit next to each other? Do they have a plotter? Do they have a printer? Do they have space for me to pin up some printouts? How often do people come into the office? And you know, because of COVID, we tend to shift to work from home or work remotely. But still, that's something that I want to evaluate. I want to take a look at. How many offices do they have? Do they only have offices in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley, or in other states in the US, or maybe even in other countries, in Europe, in Asia? Yeah, so what do you guys think? It's a huge topic, isn't it? Well, it is and it should be because it will be part of your day-to-day -day work, so you really should think through of all those. The answers that you have will be very different from mine, and actually, that is the point. Everybody is different. Find out what you like, what you prefer, what suits you better, what are you looking for, so that you can decide on the offer that works the best for you, that you will be happy about, that you will feel excited every morning. Any thoughts and comments welcome? Let me know in the comment section down below. Here are some related topics that I plan to talk about in future videos. If you have preferences of which one you want me to talk about first, let me know. If you think of something that's not here, feel free to let me know as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX career tips or design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. 
well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun, follow your passion, and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!